I am Matt Williamson. How's everyone this wonderful day? We are going to do a podcast today about when the Steelers have the football against the Jacksonville Jags. And I want you to look at the Jacksonville Jag defense in this light that their GM is all about bigger is better, length, power. You know, Trevon Walker is the perfect example of that. Um, much more of a traits player when they drafted him first overall than skilled player at this standpoint, you know, raw. But this defense, especially the front seven, was also built to stop Derrick Henry twice a year and Jonathan Taylor twice a year. I mean, big power, power running games. And their front seven is huge. And they rotate defensive tackles like crazy. Their linebackers, which we'll get to, play every snap, and they are all big and they're all physical, and teams just aren't running on the Jags, you know, as a result. So keep that in mind when we go through these stats and run down. So that's how they're built. So Steelers offense averages 4.7 yards a play. Not good. Jags allow 5.4 yards per play. Steelers are averaging a league low 4.3 yards per play on first and second downs. The early down success rate for the Steelers is just horrible and needs to change. Offense, Pittsburgh's offense converts a set of downs into a new set of downs at a rate only higher than the Jets, and the Jaguars' defense is fifth best in this metric. So not exactly a great matchup in that regard, obviously. And that, that's, a, that's a metric I've been getting into more and more this year. I haven't seen it until this year, but I do think it's very telling You know, you're giving a set of downs. Can you do something with it? Well, Steelers aren't. On a per-play basis, the Steelers' offense has the lowest success rate in the entire NFL. Jacksonville's defense is sixth best in success rate. Jacksonville's defense has played 34.8% of their snaps in base personnel with four defensive backs on the field. That's the highest percentage That's the fifth highest percentage in the league. So they play a lot of base. Only three offenses are producing fewer yards per drive than the Steelers, and only two are producing fewer points and touchdowns per drive, as well as the most punts per drive. So per drive, Steelers are really bad. The Bengals are the only offense that has gone three and out a higher percentage of their drives than Pittsburgh. Wow. Wow. Steelers have scored zero points on their opening drive of any game this year. However, over the past two weeks, Pittsburgh has scored a total of 13 points in quarters one through three, but 28 in the fourth quarter over those two games. In the first three quarters of game of play, Kenny Pickett is completing just under 58% of his passes, last in the NFL, with 6.0 yards per attempt. In the fourth quarter, though, he's at 73% and 10.1 per attempt. Only four teams are producing less less first-half points per game than the Steelers, and only the Ravens are allowing fewer first-half points per game than Jacksonville. Don't go in with a heavy lead. (laughs) Don't go in with a heavy deficit, because this sets up that way in a big way. We know this is not a come-from-behind team. Only four offenses have a lower completion percentage than the Steelers. The Steelers have attempted a pass 20 or more yards downfield on 6.9% of their throws. That's the fourth smallest percentage of deep pass attempts. Last week was Pickett's best marks of the season for completion percentage, 68%, as well as yards per attempt, 9-2. I think we could all probably agree that that was probably his best game of the year. Um, The average time to throw against Jacksonville is just 2.44 seconds. Just four defenses are quicker. So they're a very high pressure rate team. We'll get to that here, actually, in a minute here. Only the Chargers are giving up more passing yards per game than Jacksonville. The Jags are forcing a league high 41.6 pass attempts per game. People don't run on them. They're only sacking their opponents on 4% of the dropbacks. Only the Bears and Texans are worse. Not getting sacks. Um, I'll be back in a minute. Well, let's take that quick break, and we'll talk about some individual you know, Steeler stuff here, too.
All right. George Pickens got five passes for 107 yards. And returning from injury, Deontay also hauled in five passes, but for 79 yards in Los Angeles. Johnson played every offensive snap when the Steelers were in 11 personnel, but only eight of a possible 21 snaps when they were in 12. But Johnson did run a route on 86% of the Steelers' pass plays. And the combination of Pickens and Johnson accounted for 61% of Pickett's targets against the Rams. Pickens now has 100-plus receiving yards in back-to-back games, and in half of his six games in his second NFL season, he's had at least 100 yards. He's also producing 2.43 yards per route run, which is 10th best in the entire league. Pickens is lining up on the outside for 87% of his snaps, where Jacksonville is allowing 9.1 yards per target on the outside, that's 21st, and a 7.7 touchdown rate, which is 27th. So they're allowing a lot of touchdowns to receivers lined up on the outside, which is where Pickens does his work. Johnson posted a 13.2 yards per target last week. That was the third highest of any game in Johnson's career. And those two games were, other than that, he only had a combined six targets. Early in his career, he had some two games where he had better yards per target, but they were early on and he was not a full-time player yet. Jalen Warren only ran a route on 25% of Pickett's dropbacks. That's a season low last week. Connor Hayward played 25 of a possible 31 snaps in 11 personnel with three receivers on the field. Darnell Washington took six snaps in 11, but they were all run plays. With Rodney Williams in the mix, the Steelers' offense ran six snaps of 13 personnel. Hayward ran a route on 96% of Pickett's dropbacks in that game. So he's not staying in the block. Uh, Jags' defense last week played 90 plays. I told you there are two linebackers, Awolakon and Lloyd, Lloyd missed one snap, but but that's the only snap that either one of them missed the whole game. They play all the time. Josh Allen has seven of the Jags' 13 sacks this season. No one else has more than Trevon Walker's 2.5. Jacksonville sacked Derek Carr last week just once. Allen leads the NFL, though, with 43 quarterback pressures. They're a great pressure team. They're not a great sack team. Pickett was only sacked twice last week, but only two offenses are allowing a higher pressure rate than the Steelers. So they allow a lot of pressures. Yeah, you know. The Steelers' 81.3 rushing yards per game is only better than four offenses. Only six offenses get fewer yards before contact per rush attempt. The Jags allow 80.6 rushing yards per game. Only three defenses are better. Only 3.2 of the Jags' rushing attempts against them go for 15 or more yards. Just seven defenses are lower. The Jags' opponents have only run the ball 34% of their snaps. Just two defenses are seeing a less percentage of called runs. Running backs average just 3.4 yards per carry against Jacksonville. That's third best in the league. Najee had a snap share of 56% last week. That was a that tied a season high for him. Warren had seven touches last week. That was a season low mark for him. The Jags are allowing the fourth fewest rushing yards per game, but the most receptions to opposing running backs. So throwing to backs could be a big thing here. Uh, Last nugget, Jacksonville's opponents are averaging 5.7 plays per drive. Only four defenses are better. The Steelers' offense is averaging 5.46 play per drives. Only the Jets are fewer. Not an easy matchup, folks. Not an easy matchup. All right. I'll talk to you guys later. Over and out.